Many process systems have to be supplied with a variety of fluids in order to operate properly. These fluids, which include liquids and gases, are carried throughout the plant by a maze of piping systems. The flow of the fluids through the piping systems is controlled by valves. Maintenance personnel are responsible for servicing and repairing different types of valves to keep plant systems operating smoothly. Valves are used to control the flow of fluids in piping systems. When a valve is opened, fluid flow begins. When a valve is closed, the flow is stopped. Many valves are designed to operate in either the fully open or the fully closed position, but not in between. In this unit, we'll call these valves on-off valves. In addition to starting or stopping the flow of a fluid, some valves are designed to regulate flow as well. This can be done by partially opening or closing a valve. Valves that operate in this manner are sometimes called either control valves or throttling valves since they regulate or throttle flow. The largest component of a valve is the valve body. It provides a path for fluid flow through the valve. The valve body can be made of different materials such as bronze, cast iron, and stainless steel. The material that's used depends on the valve's application. The valve body provides the means to connect the valve within a piping system and it houses many of the valve's components. One of the internal components is the valve seat. The seat is a stationary component of the valve and it can be threaded, press fit, or welded into the body of the valve. In some cases, the seat is cast as a component of the valve body. In high pressure, high temperature situations, the seat may be both threaded and welded to prevent leaks. The seat is used together with a movable component called a disc to control flow through the valve. The disc is attached to the stem and the stem connects to the hand wheel. The hand wheel is used to screw the stem in and out, which in turn lowers or raises the disc. If the hand wheel is turned in the open direction, the stem moves up and the disc moves away from the seat. As a result, flow through the valve is increased. When the disc reaches its limit of travel, the valve is fully opened and maximum flow can pass through the valve. If the hand wheel is turned in the closed direction, the disc moves down toward the seat and fluid flow is reduced. When the disc presses tightly against the seat, the valve is fully closed and flow through the valve is stopped. In order to maintain a leak-proof seal, the faces of the disc and the seat must be smooth and fit together perfectly. The removable bonnet is designed to allow access to the interior of the valve and to provide a leak-proof seal. It also supports the other valve components. The bonnet can be bolted, threaded, or welded to the valve body. At the point where the stem goes through the bonnet, there's a recessed area called the stuffing box. The stuffing box holds the packing. The purpose of the packing is to prevent fluid leaks from the interior of the valve while allowing the stem to move freely through the bonnet. The packing is made of a material that can be compressed to form a tight seal around the stem. To compress the packing, a component called the gland follower is attached to the valve. The gland follower can be bolted or threaded onto the valve bonnet. When the gland follower bolts are tightened, the packing is compressed to prevent leaks. Valves come in many shapes and sizes, and they can be used in many different applications. The way a particular valve is identified can depend on factors such as its physical characteristics or how it's being used. Among the common ways to classify a valve are 
by the shape of its disk, by the shape of its body, by its function, by the conditions under which the valve operates, and by the method used to connect the valve within the piping system. Keep in mind, though, that valves are often identified using more than one of these classifications. This valve is called a ball valve. It's identified by the shape of its disc, which is a ball. Another example of a valve that's identified by the shape of its disc is this needle valve. It has a narrow, pointed disc that's shaped something like a needle. This valve may be identified by the shape of its body. Because it has a globe-shaped body, the valve is called a globe valve. This valve is identified by its function. It's a fuel flow control valve. Its purpose is to control the flow of fuel entering a furnace. This is an example of a valve that's identified by the conditions under which it operates. It's called a high pressure steam valve. During operation, the valve regulates flow through a high pressure steam line. Some valves are identified by the way they're connected to the piping system. For example, this flanged valve gets its name from the fact that it has flanges that are bolted to the piping. Similarly, this threaded valve has threaded connections for joining it to the piping system. And this welded valve is welded to the piping. The same valve can often be identified in several different ways. For example, this valve can be called a fuel flow control valve because its function is to control the flow of fuel to a furnace. It can also be called a globe valve because of the shape of its body. And it can be called a flanged valve because of the way it connects to the piping system. Gate valves are primarily used for turning fluid flow on and off and for isolating equipment. They're normally installed in applications where straight flow is desired. A gate valve generally has a relatively long body and stem, which extend some distance beyond the piping that the valve is connected to. A gate valve typically has two seating surfaces and a disc that fits between them. The disc is raised and lowered, like a gate, to start or stop the flow of fluid through the valve. This valve has a wedge-shaped disc. When the closing point is reached, the disc is wedged tightly against the valve seating surfaces and flow is shut off. Sometimes a wedge-shaped disc is split down the center and the two halves rest independently on opposite sides of the valve seat. Small gate valves generally have fixed seats that are cast as part of the valve body. It's more economical just to replace these valves than to repair them when they're worn or damaged. Large gate valves, however, frequently have replaceable seats. With these types of valves, it's less expensive to replace the seat than the entire valve. Many gate valves have what is called a rising stem. In most cases, the stem rises as the hand wheel is turned counterclockwise and lowers when the hand wheel is turned clockwise. The amount of stem protruding from the hand wheel indicates the position of the disc. If the stem is all the way down, the valve is closed. If the stem is all the way up, the valve is open. On a gate valve with a non-rising stem, the stem and hand wheel rotate together. The disc is threaded to the lower portion of the stem. The disc then moves up or down the stem as the hand wheel is rotated, but the stem does not move up or down. Because no allowances for stem movement are necessary, a non-rising stem is useful in applications where space is limited. Gate valves work best when they operate in either the fully open or the fully closed position. When a gate valve's disc is completely raised, fluid flows straight through the valve with little obstruction. However, if the disc is partially raised, a space opens on either side of the disc and fluid passes under the disc. This type of flow 
creates turbulence and causes the disc to swing from side to side, banging or chattering against the seating area. The chattering quickly leads to wear on the seat and the disc. Eventually, the damaged valve won't be able to shut off flow even when it's fully closed. Also, the flow of fluid through a partially open gate valve wears the disc unevenly. In time, the edges of the disc that are most exposed to the flow become eroded, and the disc can no longer seat properly. The seating surface, body type, and disc arrangement of a globe valve vary according to the design and function of the valve. For example, an angled globe valve, or angle valve, has a globe-shaped body with an inlet and an outlet at right angles. This design enables the valve to change the direction of fluid flow. Using an angle valve eliminates the need for the additional piping that's normally required to change the direction of flow when other types of valves are used. Several different types of discs are commonly used in globe valves. This is a standard or conventional type disc for a globe valve. The disc seats against a tapered flat surfaced seat. A globe valve with this type of disc is generally used in either the fully open or the fully closed position. It can, however, also be used for moderate throttling or regulating of flow. Globe valves with conventional discs are normally used in low pressure, low temperature systems. This globe valve has a composition disc. This type of disc is replaceable and it comes in a variety of materials for different types of service, such as high and low temperature water, air, or steam systems. The seating surface for a composition disc is often formed by a rubber O-ring or a washer. This globe valve has a plug type disc. The disc is cone shaped and it fits into a cone shaped seat. This design gives a wide seating area that makes the valve suitable for throttling flow. Also, the valve can be used for a wide range of pressure and temperature conditions. 